we're back for the final part of this inaugural episode of Joystick Justice League. And what we want to talk about now is actually some really big news in the industry. I think it's getting almost a little glossed over in the mainstream media. Um, a certain developer by the name of John Carmack... I did, I, I did a spit take when I first heard about someone. Uh, left it for good. We're talking about... I think, yeah. he, I think he has some sort of... Um, some sort of like uh, some role in terms of like overseeing future development of maybe Doom titles, but that's it. He left for Oculus Rift. Oculus Rift, yeah. Uh, Oculus Rift. So uh, if you've been following Oculus Rift in the industry, it's still not really mainstream news yet because it's still majorly in development. But as you've been informing me, there's been some major improvements to the Oculus system for us. So if, if you don't know what Oculus Rift is yet, it's essentially an independent virtual reality system that is actually starting to make virtual reality a tangible reality for gaming. Yeah, this was, uh, as far as, I'm pretty sure it was a Kickstarter project that started out. And uh, what they've managed to do with this, you know, I've, I've tried a few of these other ones that, that have come out, and the problem with these uh, virtual reality headsets is that, what's called latency. And by what that I mean is you move your head and then it goes. What they've managed to do with this is they've managed to get that latency period down to almost nothing, mm -hmm. which is pretty sweet. So you turn your head, the screen turns directly in conjunction with your head. Exactly. Whereas there would have been a bit of a delay before. That, that was always the issue. But there's a bit of a trade-off though. Because of uh, some of these games that you're playing, and because it's so instantaneous in the, in the reaction to your, to your head movement, is that pretty well everybody has been Trying this has been saying that they've been motion sickness. Yeah, huge part. I mean, and that again goes to any type of virtual reality, whether it's 3D movie watching, there's always that motion sickness problem, which they are trying to fix. Like, I've been following the Oculus Rift development as well. I mean, the, the most recent boast a few months ago was the fact that they were actually starting to get able to get the technology up to 1080p yeah. and get it to a good frame rate where you wouldn't see that stuttery problem, which you saw in like early 3D movies. And, and, and kind of going off on a tangent for a sec, Really, that is the reason why The Hobbit had to be done at 48 frames a second. People thought that it looked too real and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But it's really the only way that 3D can work because if it's being, if, if you're running 3D, uh, especially when the camera pans, it's going to stutter. I noticed that when I saw Tron Revolution. That was the only 3D movie I went to see. I got a huge headache because of the stuttery motion. Whereas I think I could handle The Hobbit. I haven't seen it on 3D, but I feel that with that smooth panning motion, it would work. And that's yeah. what they're kind of bringing into Oculus Rift now. They're, they're getting up to that 48 frames, 60 frames a second, which basically can't be done on consoles yet. They've already come out and said that PS4, Xbox One will not be seeing Oculus Rift support because it's just it's too major for the current infrastructure, which is why it hasn't really publicly been released yet. Yeah, you know, we'll see what happens with that. And, and you know, bringing Kermack on, you know, maybe maybe he could uh, because this guy's obviously done some cool stuff. You know, one of the guys that started the whole first-person shooter genre. Yeah, he's coming kind off of, as their chief technology officer or their CTO. So it'll be interesting to see if he can help these guys solve some of these issues that, are, that, that they're having. Yeah, and I think what the most recent thing I heard was that they've they're they're pretty much ready to go into the 4K realm. Um, and it's funny because. The, the reason why the development process has been so long is because they've had to rethink game developing to the core. One of the major things they said when they ported Team Fortress 2 over to Oculus Rift was that when you get inside the game, you all of a sudden feel like a dwarf. Yeah. So they had to like resize all the doors, the walls, the scope of the environment to actually make you feel like you're a six foot character. And, and I see where they're going because if you've played the beginning of say Kill, Killzone Shadowfall, when you play a nine-year-old self, you walk around and you can tell there's a height differential. You know, the ceilings are really tall. Yeah. But the way that games like Call of Duty Ghosts and Team Fortress 2 are, if you automatically port those over Oculus Rift, you will feel like a five-foot-tall midget. And that's why all these games have to be radically redesigned to support yeah. Oculus Rift. Yeah, or, or at least, uh, you know, have some kind of support, uh, you know, whether it's like a patch or something to get on to, to yeah. allow, you know, to, to play it that way. Otherwise, I mean, uh, you know, it, We'll see what happens with it. I mean, uh, it's it, it, it's gonna be really cool if they come with it. And another thing that they're looking at uh, adding onto it is not just with the vision. Uh, I even saw that they basically have like a trend book yes, kind of stuff, yes. so that you're not only really gonna be looking, but in conjunction, you're 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 gonna, you're gonna also be moving and like almost kind of fully interacting. Yeah, in like a, in 360 in degrees world. of area. They've it's, already tested this out with Minecraft. I, I've yeah. seen people doing the Minecraft mod for Oculus Rift and literally walking around the game world yeah. and spinning around and spinning the camera with their own body movement. So it's, it's in the pipeline. They're making this work. But right now, I mean, the Oculus, work, the, the Oculus Rift 
does work. I mean, they've, they've been able to port Skyrim over to it. They've done Surgeon Simulator very successfully. It worked for those kind of small scale games, but again, I think to, to truly start taking huge franchises like Battlefield and like Half-Life over to it, we're, we're still a few years away. Yeah, it, it's, you know, uh, I don't think that they should rush to try and get this out. I think that they should maybe take their time with a little bit, you know. Don't take too long because the technology will start changing and then they'll have to start rewriting again. But I mean, we take their time enough to, to try and nail this, this down. And, and I hope it works for them. Yeah, and you've got the competition. I mean, it's, it's yeah. widely known that Sony is working on their own version of virtual reality. We, we already saw it. Like, it was, it's almost two years now since they debuted uh, the PlayStation Move enabled um, virtual reality technology for the PS3 that was quickly scrapped once people saw how primitive it was. But we know that Sony's working on this. And I, if I were a betting man, I would say that the PS5 generation will be about two things, VR and 4K gaming. But that's still a few years away, so I think both camps, like Sony and Oculus Rift, whoever else is working on virtual reality, I know there are others. I mean, I've read about others. Oculus Rift is the only one that's really made some headway, but this is really, you have to pay attention to this if you're a gamer. I, th I think you know that this is really where gaming is going in the next decade. It, it, it's it's definitely where it's going to be going, and uh, and uh, you know, and, and like you said, Sony and Microsoft, you know, they're paying attention to this too. And uh, you know, and if and if Oculus Rift, if they don't start sorting this thing out, I mean, worst case scenario, you might even see. Sony or Microsoft maybe even try and buy these guys out for some of these passes that they have, and I hope that doesn't happen because I, I would rather see when these independent guys come out with this because, I mean, for obvious reasons. I think you're right because you know what I think that the the, the inexplicable tie that the, the sorry inextricable tie that Oculus Rift seems to have to Steam right now and especially to Valve keeps the PC faction of the market healthy in comparison to the looming threat of the consoles, which are catching up to the PC's territory. I mean, we see it in, in, like, in, in the fact that MMOs are now a tangible reality yeah. on next-gen consoles. Really, that line between PC gaming and console gaming is, is getting smaller yeah. and smaller. And I think Oculus Rift being tied to PC gaming is what's gonna keep that side of things competitive. So that's yeah. big news right now. Really though, like John Carmack left it. So what does that mean for like Doom and and, Cal and Quake? Uh, you know, I, is it I, done? I, I don't. I don't think that they're done. I, I'm hoping that uh, some of the guys that are still up behind it have learned enough from them that they can keep this thing going. Yeah, and that's what the official release is: is that Carmack left enough knowledge with the developers to continue on on his franchises. But it, yeah. it, it really is that effect sometimes that when you lose that figurehead, you really lose the heart and soul. I hope that's not the case, but that really was the case arguably with Infinity Ward when Vince Pell and Jason West left to make Titanfall. Now Infinity Ward's not even close to the company it used to be. So hopefully, not the same thing with id, but honestly, the way things I see going, I can see id pretty much being subsumed by Bethesda and just kind of join their umbrella. I hope not, you know, and, and uh... You know, we'll see. You know, I'm hoping that he hasn't like completely cut ties with him. I'm hoping that maybe he could still be like, like kind of a like consultant. Yeah, and you know, that's and, what the word I was looking for, and, consultancy. And, and, and kind of keep keep them, uh, not necessarily keep them on track, but you know, to still help these guys come up because, I mean, I don't think we're too long away from seeing a Doom Four. So I hope not. I mean, I, I think Doom Three still has an lasting appeal how with long the BFG. Ago was Doom 3? A long time ago, but then so we saw the interest that was sparked in it with the BFG edition that yeah. came out. Just the fact that you could play online Doom One and Two seamlessly <laughs> on <laughs> PS3 cool. and Xbox and PC, just amazing. So cool. there's obviously still a lot of love. Obviously, like look at the like the attendance at QuakeCon every year. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of love for the houses that Carmack built. So uh, hopefully, we won't see the end of that. But again. The fact that he is entering the Oculus Rift arena can only be good things for that company. For sure. Yeah. So uh, that's 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 some big news. To kind of end things off this inaugural jam-packed info episode of Joystick Justice League, we basically just want to talk about some of the games we're playing. And if you have anything to say about these games, please feel free to put some info into the comments below and we can have a little discussion. So what are you playing right now? Right now, I got two big games I'm playing. Clumsy Ninja that I talked about before. I've already kind of talked about that, so I'm not going to touch on it too much. But the other one, other one that I've been playing, PS3. This game alone sells the PS3, and I'm talking about The Last of Us, man. Yes. I know I've been blogging about this. I've been talking to people, and it's it's. You know, some people are telling me 
to kind of knock it off already. But I mean, I love this game. That's The Last of Us. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I think that because The Last of Us came out in the spring ahead of the big fall rush and stuff, I think, you know, even though it had its 10 out of 10 rating, it had its great sales, I think that The Last of Us has the danger of kind of falling to the side of the hype that Assassin's Creed is getting right now, that Battlefield's getting right now. Um, this is a game for the ages. I mean, what, whether you love or hate what it's about, I mean, I personally didn't really like the ending. I'm not gonna spoil it. I think it was a little negative, but I can't give enough weight to the fact that this game is revolutionary in terms of how it it blurs the lines between, between filmmaking and game playing. Even in a greater way, I think, than Uncharted was able, ever able to achieve. I mean, you were saying this. I mean, just the fact that the story and the gameplay meld so well together, it's just really an achievement and really a, a progression of narrative storytelling and gaming. I, I think they're really starting to hit their stride. And you see it in GTA V as well. Just no cutscenes, yeah. melding in and out, right? Yeah, you know, it, it's... Uh... Uh, I haven't been able to put this game down. I mean, I'll, I've, I've gone off and played other games, and just today I was in the middle of playing Ghost. You know what? I gotta go back and play some more Lost. But so it's it's one of those games where I mean, it just it never goes away. It's almost like a sexual disease. Mike, it keeps coming back and asking for more, and it keeps pulling me back in, <laughs> keeps pulling me back in. And well, without those sore red spots and yeah, embarrassing I mean, images, it, I can't say enough about it. I mean, I love this game, and I, I'm not the only one that feels this way. And uh, I, and. With Naughty Dog, I mean, I'm really excited to see what these guys are going to do. Yeah. I, I think this was it. I think Last of Us was really the moment where everybody took notice and said Naughty Dog is really up there with Bungie. They are. And Bioware. They're just the top of the top. I think. I don't think we could expect any wrong because they know how to make games. They, they take the, the years and the time they need to polish these games. They don't rush them out every year. They don't give a shit about what your shareholders think. They make games that are games for the sake, for the love of gaming. And, and if you haven't played Last of Us, man, what a great game. It just, it's long and there's just all this extra DLC that's going to continue the story now. So, I mean, if you haven't played it you know, and, and you've been completely blinded by all this next gen hype, really go back to your last gen yeah. and this is a classic of the ages. Uh, myself, I have actually been getting to the PS4 now, so I'm playing Resogun, uh, the new one by Housemark from the makers of Super Stardust HD. And, and what a great launch title. Not a huge AAA game, but just a pretty hardcore game. This game is hard. It's a twin stick shooter, but it's done on kind of like a, a, a gyroscope. So it, it's like a new way of playing and, and just really shows you all the cool new particle effects that are capable like of all the little art, you know, just all the things that can be happening on the screen one time. And, and just a really well-balanced gameplay. They're taking elements of Super Stardust HD, but adding this whole new kind of basketball kind of theme of you just have to play it. It's free right now. Even if you don't have a PS4, if you have a PS Plus account, all you have to do is go onto the web store of Sony, click on download for your Plus account, put it in your history, and then whenever you actually do decide to get your PS4, it will be in your library. For fans of old arcade twin six shooters and looking for like a real hardcore, well-balanced, well-crafted challenge, you can't go much further than Resogun. And I also have to give a quick shout out to XCOM Enemy Within, which is something I'm getting right back into. This is almost two years, uh, almost two years now after XCOM Enemy Unknown came out for PC, PS3, Xbox 360. That game was a revelation, and, and, and if you watched uh, my old review of Joystick Judgment Day, which is also on this page, I gave it a 10 out of 10. I mean, actually, I didn't post it, but I could post it at some point, or maybe do a review of this, which I will be doing at some point. This game really, simplifies the RTS structure, makes it intuitive for consoles. And, and, and they didn't really promote this game much when it came out. It was a sleeper hit. It was really word of mouth that kind of drove this kind of rising fan base that XCOM is starting to get. Uh, it came out of nowhere. I mean, I didn't see it coming out until I, until I read something about it. I mean, I didn't have any, any knowledge of it. I talk about just like, a game with flaws that almost feels flawless. Like I mean, yeah. in a sense that you, you, it is so good, so deep, so original. The way this game is is made that you 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 ignore the odd screen tear, the odd <laughs> scratching vocal. And what's really great about this is that if you get this on the consoles, you actually have to flip another forty bucks to get this new XCOM Enemy Within edition, which basically includes XCOM Enemy Unknown. All the slingshot DLC and then the new add-on, which PCs can just down PC players can just download the add-on for within. But you have to go out and buy the full disc, forty dollars to get this new experience. And I'll tell you right now, it's worth it. Okay, 
all the audio glitches and graphical glitches I was complaining about in Enemy Unknown, and especially all the, the matchmaking glitches that were happening in the online, have been fixed. This game has been polished, it looks better now. I'll say, like even in the tutorial, when you're playing and it's there's lightning striking, you can actually see like the screen turned white when the lightning flashes in, and this, I can tell the sound effects have been re-recorded and done better. But now, it's not only just graphical and sound enhancements, the, the enemy within add-on is, is amazing. It's just the fact that you add, not only, alien, you, not only do you have the alien research you can do, you have the weapons research, but now you have melding research. So you can actually craft cybernetic implants for your soldiers. You can literally turn your soldiers into a mech, which is fucking amazing. This game can be played forever. I mean, it is one of the hardest games I know. It is one of those games where the first time I played it, I was 10 hours into the campaign. I had made a, a mistake in research in my research tree about six hours previously, and I got to a point where I couldn't go on anymore. It was the game was beating me down, and I realized, oh my god, I should have done this. And that's why when you play this game, you gotta jump the saves. It's it's a must because at some point when you play this through the first time and you're trying to get used to the mechanics of this game, you will screw up and you'll pay for it. Suddenly. As long as you have a save somewhere down the line where you yeah, can go back and try again, and you will try again a lot of times. And, and, and even if you, you don't, if you get tired of the single player campaign, then you've got this robust multiplayer, which actually works like the opposite of the Call of Duty formula in the sense that we're in Call of Duty, you always unlock perks, you unlock things by playing. This gives you everything up front and just gives you skill points to build your team. So it essentially is a chess match. It's almost like a card battle, but in a third quarter RTS. And, and, and what's great too about this is that Traditional RTS is like Command and Conquer, typically you don't divert too much from that overhead view. Mm -hmm. But what's great is that XCOM actually uses beautifully placed cutscenes yeah. to keep the action fresh and frenetic and just great ambiance. And again, going back to that UFO theme that was kind of abandoned since the 90s, which is slowly making it back to the mainstream. So I, I can't say enough about this game. You don't even have to get Enemy Within. If you've got an iPad, you can get Enemy Unknown on that fully on the iPad. Enemy Within is now available. The add is on Steam and you can get the full version for about 40 bucks on 360 PS3. You will not be disappointed. If you ever wanted to feel like what it was play like to, to, to play like Battlefield or Call of Duty as the general and not the soldier, this is it right here. So, um, been an amazing inaugural episode. I gotta thank my, uh, my host Joe Morin for showing up for the premiere episode of Joystick Justice League. I hope you enjoyed what you see, uh, what you saw today. And we're gonna be back for a lot more. I know you've got a couple reviews coming up. What are you gonna be reviewing soon? I'm going to be reviewing Arkham Asylum and Bastion for iPad. Absolutely, and I will be reviewing sound shapes for the PS4, and of course, I will also be looking at Dragon's Crown, which came out for PS3 and Vita just this past year. Another one of those games you may, if you blink, you would have missed it. But for fans of you know the old Dungeons and Dragons arcade games, you're going to love this. So a lot of great stuff coming from this network. Make sure you subscribe to YouTube, and you guys all have a great day. Support Indie Games, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace. Peace.